Hey everyone. Now you may have seen in a previous video, I've used a Raspberry Pi like this with a wireless capture device and a little battery to do wireless packet captures. And it works good, except it's a bit bulky. So the Raspberry Pi 4 here in this metal case is heavy and this battery didn't last long. Now this is a, what is it, a 3000 milliamp hour battery, I think it was, yep. 3000 milliamp battery, battery with um, 1.5 amps. So it drains pretty quickly and it's bulky. So what I wanted, well, what I first did was change the battery. I thought I need a bigger battery. So I went to one of those little kiosks that they have in shopping centers where they sell mobile phones. And they had a few there, so I thought I'll just get the biggest one. And when I got it out of the box, it was actually bigger than I thought, it's big and heavy. Now it's 30,000 milliamp hours. And I can put like five, what, uh, what is it? Two, uh, what have we got? Two and a half amps, no, four and a half amps. Four and a half amps output at five volts, and it's got huge capacity, but of course, now it's super bulky. So I went back there and I thought, well, I don't need that because this just lasted forever. It was way more power than I needed. So I went back and got their smallest version, which is this one here, which, what was that? 10,000 milliamp hours. So that's still got a lot of capacity compared to the 3,000 that was. So I've got that, but this is still too bulky. So what I'm gonna do now is change that Raspberry Pi for a Raspberry Pi W, zero, sorry, zero W, and use that as the capture device. Now, I've used that before with a little cable here and the, the device just plugs in like that. But what I wanna do is rip this apart and connect it directly to the Raspberry Pi. So that USB device plugs in like that, but on the back of this where that USB port is, you can see those two pads there. They're the data pads for the USB uh, connection. So what I'm gonna do is solder to them directly and pull this apart and get to where its USB connector is and just have the two circuit boards. And then what I might do is put the whole lot in heat shrink and then just slap it to the smaller battery. So that's my plan. Right, so these are the components and the plan is to miniaturize this. So I'm gonna pull this apart, solder that into here, because you can see you've got the data pins for USB here and I'll just grab a couple of power ones from here and I'll feed the power to the five volt on here and then try and wrap this up somehow and that should be it. All right, I'm just gonna try and cut this open and see what's inside and see if I don't break it along the way. Let's see, oh, here we go. Okay, I see the board, so now I'll get the delicate side cutters. All right, I'll just chisel this out. Back here. There we go. You really want to see this, do you? Yep, there we go. Now the antennas, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them, because obviously I won't have the, the chassis for them. Right, so there it is. Not much to it, really. What I am going to try and do is desolder this USB connector so I can put wires onto those connectors and put them straight to the Pi Zero. That could be fiddly. We'll see what happens. So what I might do is lay them out like this and maybe put the antennas down the side here like that and put these two in a bit of heat shrink and then once they're in, I'll put the whole thing in some heat shrink. Maybe, something like that. Now this is hardly a Lewis Rossman setup and I'm half blind, but I'm gonna <laughs> see if I can get that thing off. Just try not to laugh too hard at this. Right, I'm basically just gonna wrestle with this and it's not gonna be elegant. So. I think that was probably quite dumb. I don't give a shit. I don't know what that achieved. Probably shouldn't have done that, but I bloody well felt like it. There you go. Piss off. There we are. Alright, it now looks like that, so I can get to the pins. I just gotta figure out where they went. <laughs> but I'll figure out. There's only two data pins in there, so it can't be that hard. Okay, so the four pins of the USB port have one extra conductor in between all of them. So that's why there are nine on here. Have I counted that right? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so I've got to go for those four and connect them to the board. Now I know what I've got to do. So now I've got to bell out which one goes to where on the Raspberry Pi. You can see those two pins there. I should go to something in the center. That's that one. That's that one. 
Okay, I'll jot that down. Okay, so I've got my little diagram, and there's the Raspberry Pi. What I'm going to do is put a little bit of this ribbon cable in to the power and those USB points there, and solder this to there. Okay, after much eye straining, I've got the Raspberry Pi here soldered onto the Wi-Fi adapter here. Hopefully, the right pins. So now, trying to test it and see if I fucked it up or not. All right, here goes. I hope I haven't messed this up. Is there a light? Yep, there's a light on that. Oop, I saw stuff on me packet capture I still had going over there. And there you go, the pings. So it's online there. Look at that. WLAN 1 is there. That's that adapter. And there we go. It's receiving stuff. Which means I can do packet captures. <laughs> Fucking hell, look at it go. All right, it works. I mean, of course it bloody works. Okay, so I'm happy with that. That's the tedious part done. And I didn't mess my cables up, which I wasn't worried about doing. So the Raspberry Pi and the Wi-Fi adapter. So what I'm gonna do, is get some heat shrink around them, but I might put some glue on these cables first just to keep them there, but it works fine. So I'll definitely be able to do my packet captures with this. for the Wi-Fi device end. So we can do this all in one go. All right, here's how it ended up. I've got glue there, so it's got a bit of structure to it. And this one here, same sort of thing. I'm not gonna pull it too hard, but it's there. And I also did some within the antennas, because if they come off, then I'll never get to in there. So that's ready to go. What I do have to do though, is something with the power, because I won't have a power cable sitting in like that. I'm gonna cut this and solder it to the five volt pins on the pin out thing here. So that'll be the next job. All right, I've got a power cable now. I've just soldered that into those pins and I'll, I'll go and glue that down and then get ready to heat shrink this. All right, that's it there. It's all together, it all works. The power cable's in there and that's glued. So what I'm gonna do now is figure out how much of this I need to put the heat shrink on. I'm gonna put that over there and then slap it to this. Now I've got some bigger heat shrink on order to go around the whole thing but I'm going to do something with these antennas maybe glue them to the sides here before I do that. So I'll figure that out now. I'll do this end first. I'll keep that centre. Right, now that's how the heat shrink went. So that's all one solid bit there. It's pretty tough as it is. But now I've just got to attach this to the battery and put some more heat shrink over the whole lot. All right, I've got the batteries fully charged. So here's the big one, powering the big Raspberry Pi with four adapters. 100%, I'm just going to see how long that actually lasts. And same for this one here, the little portable, until I get my heat shrink, just to get an idea of how long that full battery lasts. Right, these have been on about five hours. And the big one's down to 83. The small one's only down to 88. So there's plenty, there's plenty there to last a few days. But I can't wait. I'm gonna cover that up with heat shrink here, which means I won't be able to see that anymore. But at least it gives me an idea. And I'll keep going to check how long it goes until it does actually die. So I'm just gonna put this heat shrink on. Come on. You can fit in there. Okay, it's mostly there. Take off this tape and put it down all the way. And no longer will I be able to see how much battery charge is in there. But, I live life on the edge. The memory card's still accessible. All right, so there it is, my own portable Wi-Fi packet capture device. And what I can do, it's just stick it in the pocket on the jacket there 
and go about my business and be talking to people, walking around, doing whatever, and be doing a packet capture at the same time. So it obviously does proper packet captures. There's nothing dodgy about it. So I can still open them in Wireshark. And I can also drop them into my custom built Wi-Fi analyzer here. So I can, you know, just see whatever I want to see from the, from the uh, packet capture there and hone in on stuff and see, see what's going on. And of course, open it up in Wireshark and see everything I need to. To start the captures and control it, I've just made this web app here where I can select the channels and then just give it a file name and start the capture. Simple as that. So you don't have to spend big money on getting devices that are marketed to do this kind of thing. This will give real packet captures, simple as that. And I can capture everything I need. I can get 2.4, 5 gig and 6 gig. Now I can't capture 160 meg wide channels, but I don't really need to because they're not generally the problem. The problem is the stuff that this will catch anyway. If you know what you're doing, this, this will tell me everything I want. I'd be more comfortable with this than some other device that I have to pay thousands for and probably have to license and I probably won't do what I want anyway. So anyway, that's how I do packet captures and that'll do for now. So until next time, take it easy.